Jane Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company, and I am going to do another one of our 2016 uh, PBC challenge winners here. I'm going to be doing the Trifecta Necklace. The Trifecta Necklace is by Susan Sassoon, and it features the round trios and some crescent beads as well. If you need any of these materials to make the necklace, you can go to the left-hand side here. We'll do a little drop-down menu that you can click if you want to purchase from me online, or make your list and take it to your local Potomac Bead Company location. The trifecta necklace, like I said, is based on faceted rounds, and these are the round trio. There are three hold round bead that we produce that's about six millimeter in size. The faceted round trios, um, in her design, Susan used the jet bronze color, so if you did want to get a different color, you can kind of play along with us like that. I'm going to be using the crystal Labrador full color of the faceted round trios. You're going to use approximately 25 faceted round trios, depending on how long you want to make your necklace. The necklace has a couple of different components that are put together, and then we'll go up the side and create an actual um, necklace portion as well. So we are going to be using, in addition to the faceted trio, we're going to be using some crescents. And these are the Pacifica Fig color of the crescents. They're a nice, almost lilac-y color with a little bit of a gold hint to them. We are using approximately 40 crescent beads. We have nine here that are going to be in our trifecta design as we create one more of our components and then link together in the necklace as well. They'll be up the sides of the necklace linked with some of the faceted round trios on the side creating the nice drape of the necklace. In addition to the crescents and the faceted round trios, we do have 11 OC beads that are used. I'm using two colors of 11 O's just to kind of play off the coloring. And for my 11 O's, I have my white Lila Vega Luster in the 11 O's, which is a deeper purple than my crescent, so it kind of makes those stand out. And then I have aluminum silver. You could also use a galvanized silver or crystal Labrador 11 O seed bead. Those would look nice with them too. If you want to just use one color of your 11 O, you can do that as well. In her design, Susan just used one color. In addition to the faceted round trees, the crescents, and then your seed beads, I do have a crystal drop here. This is a Preciosa crystal faceted briolette. Uh, they're sold per piece, and that is going to hang down from the base of the pendant, almost give it kind of a Victorian look. I have sitting here some three millimeter bicones, uh, Preciosa Crystal AB bicones as well, just in case I have somewhere further up in the uh, bracelet to give an opportunity to add a little bling further up in as well, so it's just not a crystal there at the bottom. So it's kind of optional whether or not you want to add a little bit bling further up the line as well to kind of pull the whole thing together. I am going to be using .006 white wildfire beading thread to go with this and a size 10 needle. Because it is a necklace, unless you're making it long, you do want to clasp for the end of the necklace. And I am working on a bead on it board or a bead mat so that way I have a nice working surface. To get started on this necklace, we are doing three components. They're going to be hooked together here in order to make the middle of our pendant into that triangle out of the triangles that we're creating. So I have two of my triangle component pieces ready to go and I'm going to make a third so that way I can link them all together. To create those triangle pieces you want to have about uh, 24 inches of thread per piece. So I've got my two feet of thread here and I put a stop bead on the thread. It's a bead that will come off and is not actually used in my project. And I've gone through that two times in order to make a bead that will stop my other beads from falling off. I'm going to start by using an 11 in my uh, Lila Vega color. And then I'm going to put on one of my faceted round trios. The faceted round trios again have three holes and I'm going on one of the exterior holes to add them at this point. After I put another 11 out and a crescent. When I pick up the crescents, I want to make sure that all the crescents are facing in the same direction. Put on another 11 out and another round trio. This is the trifecta. It's based on groups of three. So I'm going to do this three times, separating out my faceted round trios from my crescents with my 11 OCB. 
once I have my last crescent on, I'm going to push that down near the stop bead. So you can see here I have my 11 trio, 11 crescent, 11 trio, 11 crescent, and so forth. I'm ending with a crescent because I started with an 11. I'm going to go back through that 11 and back through my first round trio, sewing away from the stop bead, which is going to bring this into that triangle shape. I'm going to step up now from the first hole of this faceted round trio to the second hole of the faceted round trio. To step up, you're going to go from the bottom hole of the round trio to the middle hole of the round trio. Give a nice tight pull. And I want to force those crescents to sit so they're facing up towards me. You could really do this either way. Um, if you want, you can kind of change the look by facing them down or facing them up. I'm facing them up and I'm pushing that stop bead towards the back so that way I can tie that off after the fact. To connect to the middle hole of the round trio, I'm also going to connect to the second hole of the crescent by adding two 11 OC beads, again in that purple color, onto my needle. I'm going to go the whole way around this triangle, adding two 11 O's and catching the middle hole of the round trio. You want to make sure that you're using the middle hole and not by accident going into one of the last outer hole. After I'm done adding those two beads at a time, we get to step up again and add beads for our fourth or third pass. When I add these last two beads in place here, I'm going to go through that middle hole of the faceted round trio, coming out, and I'm going to turn my needle and step up again, just like I did previously, coming out that center hole and reversing through the top hole. Again, it's going to expose a little bit of thread on the side, but I'm not going to worry about that too much because you won't see it, especially on that crystal Labrador bead. As I work around this outer edge, when I'm coming out of a round trio, I'm going to add now four of my silver 11 O's and I'm going to share and go through that same second hole of my crescent one more time. When I go through the crescent, I want to make sure that I am not also, or that I'm not going through any of those seed beads that are there. I'm just going through the crescent. Again, I'm coming out of the crescent. I'm going to add four of my 11 O's go through the last hole of the faceted round trio. When I'm at the last hole of the faceted round trio and coming out of one of the trios, I'm going to add four of my purple beads and spin around so those purple beads sit right on the outside of my faceted round trio. I'm reversing the thread back through that last hole and those seed beads are going to sit right on the top. Coming out the round trio then, four more of my silver beads go on, go through my crescent bead, making sure I'm not going through any of the other seed beads. Coming out the crescent, four more aluminum silver go on, through that round trio. When I'm coming out the round trio, I'm going to use four of my purple spin back through that faceted round trio so the beads go to the outside there. And I'm just continuing this stitch the whole way around, adding that little fringe on top of the round trios, as well as connecting with those silver beads. As I go to this first faceted round trio that my thread was coming out of, I'll go through the hole, out the round trio, and add in my last four purple beads. Once I have those four, again reverse the thread, coming back through that last hole of the trio. When I'm out the last hole of the trio there, I want to make a point on this trifecta piece. So to do that, I'm going to go up through my purple beads, only two of them that I added, and add a silver at the peak 
back through my other two purple, through my four aluminum silver, through the crescent, back through the four aluminum again. This kind of connects that whole outer row up through two of the purple and out. So I'm really restitching the whole entire row that I just did, coming out between the two purples above the faceted round trio and adding in aluminum silver seed bead to sit right at that point. This also reinforces this whole thing as you add a second string of thread going the whole way around. I'm going to add this last point here and make sure after you add the last point to sew through your purple beads as well as that first set of aluminum silver beads because that connects the whole thing together. I'm going to sew through the second crescent here and then I'm going to sew through the 11 o seed beads and in through my middle hole of my faceted round trios. So I'm bringing the thread, at this point I'm done with the outer edge, and I'm just bringing the thread down and back towards the starting point so I can actually tie the threads together and burn them off so you don't see them anymore. Once I'm out to the end here, you can see I'm through the first hole, and I need to come down to the base hole of the faceted round trio. To do so, I'm just going to sew down through that first 11 o seed bead that we put on. That pulls the whole thing together flip it over your threads are now coming out at the same place take off your stop bead and then what you can do is just take your thread and needle and tie two square knots right over left left over right and I'll do that a total of four times two square knots and then all I'm going to do is actually burn down my thread end. You're going to do this again three times because we want three components to this base of the trifecta pendant. And once you've repeated this three times, then we're going to go ahead and connect all of these pieces together. So I have this here. I'll burn off the extra with my thread burner. I'm not going to glue any of these knots because you're, we're going to still go through and connect these and I don't want to by accident glue any of my holes shut. So I now have my three component pieces that we're going to get ready to completely add all of them together in our triangular fashion here and then add our little pendant to the base here as well. We'll then create the sides to the necklace and continue to add our beads. To connect my three pieces here into this triangle, I have some thread left on my needle that I'm going to use in order to create a stop bead again. Once that stop bead is on, we're gonna connect the components together here. To connect the components together, you can think of it as the crescents are sitting right next to one another, right on the inside, creating that triangle. When it creates that triangle, we're going to be connecting all of the seed beads along the edge here, minus the little point silver seed beads here. So to start out, we're going to be connecting, and I'm starting on through going through two of my silver beads, on one of my outer edges through the crescent through then the whole row of my beads here coming out right before my 11 o aluminum silver bead so you can see where I'm through there and where I'm coming out flip over to the next piece and I'm gonna pick up my next row of purple beads so through all of those purple beads, all of the silver, then we'll also th sew through the crescent. And you want to make sure that your beads are sitting in the correct order as far as your crescents. You want them all facing the same direction. So 
so through then the aluminum silver on this side and out your last purple bead before the aluminum point. I'm gonna grab my next trifecta component here, grabbing it right at one of the purple beads there. So down through the entire line of my seed beads, including those aluminum ones. Go through the crescent. Through the aluminum and out the purple beads at the end. These three then are connected, but to connect the last one together, we're gonna go back through and reinforce basically what we just did, connecting them together using those two purple beads and out. That then connects this whole trifecta necklace component pieces. So they sit right there together. I'm going to go ahead and connect that one more time and actually flip this around here because I got it turned by accident. So I'm going to flip this around and reinforce going through one more time through those original beads. And I'm going to take a step in then and connect one more time here in the middle. So I got my pendant turned around there and to connect in the middle, just to make that trifecta sit a little bit more stable, I'm gonna sew through my crescent and two aluminum seed beads on either side of the crescent. I'm then gonna jump over to the next area here. And here's where I'm gonna go ahead and put in my crystals just to connect. If you want it to be tighter together, you can, you don't have to add the crystal. I'm gonna add the crystal and then pick up the next two aluminum silver, go through the next crescent, and come out after the two aluminum and silver beads after the crescent bead. Again, add one of my crystals. If you don't add a crystal, it'll just sit a little bit closer together. That's how Susan did hers and her written tutorial that she has available, if you'd like to get that. Going through then, I'm gonna get back to my stop bead, basically. Add my last crystal in place. All I'm gonna do then is remove my stop bead and tie my thread ends together. Once I do that, I'm gonna go ready, get ready to put my crystal at the bottom of the pendant as well. So we're going to get ready to put that crystal right on the bottom. So all I'm doing right now is taking my thread, I'm going to get that stop bead off and out of the way, and tie that thread together in a nice knot. If you can, push that knot to the back of the pendant so that way you don't see it. I will maintain the same thread and needle that I have on and bring them down through the base of the pendant, or to the base of the pendant rather, just sewing back through some beads and coming out right at that silver bead that we added. So you have that tail there. If you want to, you can keep the tail on or you can take your thread burner and burn it off. I'm gonna go back through some of the beads here, coming out the crescent. And then just to show you, I'm gonna snake back down through the pendant, going through that second hole there of my round trio. Once I'm through that second hole of the round trio, I'm gonna go down towards the bottom to come out one of my triangles. Just making sure that I don't see any extra thread exposed in the project. So I'm kind of running right along that line there, backing around, and I know this is quick. You can take your time going through and making sure that you have a nice connection point and that you're not seeing any extra thread. Once you're out the bottom, 
we get to add our crystal, which is very fun because that really kind of brings the whole thing together. So we're gonna add this crystal base or crystal drop to the end of it. When we add the crystal drop here to the end, what we're gonna do is we are going to get um, a little bit more purple there in the design. So we're coming out of that 11-0 seed bead and I'm going to add four of my purple 11 O's. Depending on the size of your briolette and the size of your drop, you may need more or less because you wanna make sure that that crystal top is not hitting the seed bead that's there. So four more purple for me. And go back and then reinforce this entire thing here. Crystals tend to have some sharp edges um, when they're manufactured. So a lot of people, when their thread does break, whether or not they're using Fireline or Wildfire, um, KO, a lot of times projects that do break are involving crystals. So any time that I have an area that has a crystal, I try to reinforce and go back through that entire area. So I'm gonna go through three times. Also the briolettes, especially if you are getting a crystal one, whether or not Swarovski or Preciosa, they're heavy. You could also add a gemstone here at the bottom if you wanted to, or you could keep it plain and keep it simple without the drop. I think the drop was a really pretty addition. In her example, Susan used a peridot drop with her um, light metallic green suede uh, crescents and the faceted round trios in that jet bronze color. So I've gone through the crystal now four times and all I'm going to do is take my thread and needle up through the project and tie off the thread and then burn down all my thread edges. I now get to connect and create my actual cording that's going to go around the necklace here connecting to the side points of the trifecta pendant that we've created. Once you have the pendant portion done and everything tied off, you can see that the pendant and the necklace can be worn two ways. So here I have the crescents facing down, and here I have the crescents with the curved side up. One gives a little bit more of a modern look, and one gives a little bit more Victorian, especially with that pendant there right at the bottom. So it's a really fun design that you can wear, almost reversible, like uh, just to give a more elegant and Victorian look versus kind of spiky and edgy with those beads kind of hanging out on the side. So to add our actual chain, the chain sits very much with the crescents on either side of the faceted round trios. I have four more of my crystals here that I'm gonna add just on the sides to bring some of that crystal look back in. What I'm gonna do to do the actual chain portion is we have another piece of thread that has a stop bead on, and this piece is about three feet or so long. I'm going to go through my beads on the side here, so I'm at the corner of one of my pendants, and I'm not going through that corner bead because I'm gonna let that sit on the corner. I'm going through the first four beads that are right there on the side of the facet, right after that corner bead. When I'm out the side here then, I'm gonna add two silver beads and then my crystal bead, which is gonna come up the side there can see here. And then I'm going to add six crystal beads out, or six of my 11 OC beads after it. And I'm adding those in the galvanized silver color. The pattern that I do next is going to repeat the whole way up the actual necklace. I'm going to put on a crescent, making sure that it's facing the same direction as the crescents in my pendant. So if you have the spike side up, you want to make sure that the spike sides are up. I'm going to set the crescent right there on my pendant and go through one of the outer holes of a round trio. Picking up another crescent, I want to make sure the crescent is sitting in the same direction. I'm going to go through the crescent bead there. You can see right there. In between that, I'm gonna put three beads. I have one of my aluminum silver. I'm bringing in one of the darker purple and one aluminum silver. Going from one hole of the crescent, I'm gonna reverse and go back through the other hole of the crescent and at the same time go through 
the other exterior hole of the round trio and the next hole of the previous crescent that we put on. And that decorates the side right there. When I'm out the base here, I'm going to put on an 11-0 in my silver color and an 11-0 in my purple color. I'm going to go through the first silver next to the crescent and out right after the crescent before the round trio. Push that whole thing down, making sure that it's falling right down next to your design. So you can see there that those purples are just going to decorate right along the sides of the actual crescent beads. And now once I'm on the side of the faceted round trio, I want to add some seed beads to go right along the side. I'm going to use my darker purple to go along the side and I'm picking up five 11 seed beads skipping completely over the faceted round trio and sewing back through my crescent bead and back through my first 11 seed bead. So you can see that decorates the sides of the crescent there and the side of the faceted round trio. I am going to, for this one, come the whole way back down then because we need to connect it to the first side. Go back through the crescent, coming out of the crescent then. I'm going to add my five beads on the sides of my round trio. Go through the crescent. And at the same time I'm going through the crescent, pick up the 11 OC bead on the opposite side. Once I'm out the 11 OC bead here, I had originally added six here. I am already through one, so I'm going to add five more. Another crystal, and then two more 11 O's. So you can see that's that first connection point then. From there, I'm going to continue basically with the same design the whole way up the necklace. And because this is the first instance where I have that kind of turn going, I'm going to take the stop bead off, tie my thread end together here, making sure the knot is kind of hidden next to those aluminum silver beads, pull them nice and tight in there. And if you do have a set side that you want to use, you can make sure to tie the knot to that side. I'm going to burn the thread down just a little bit and then go back up the bead here. There's four on the side. Go back up through the crystal and the original 11 O's. And the whole way up the side then of the bead there. Once I'm through the bead and my crescent, I want my thread and needle to exit out of the 11 O C bead. Once I'm out the 11 O C bead, I'm basically going to restart that design here minus the crystals because the crystals are just going to hang out there at the base. So coming out of the 11 O seed bead, I'm going to add eight more 11 O's. So I have nine all together. Actually, it won't do. Good measure, we'll do 10. Put on your another group of your crescents, again facing in the same direction, putting on a crescent, faceted round trio, and the crescent. When I'm at the top of the crescent, I add an 11 in the aluminum, purple, aluminum, back down through the crescent through the other side here of the round trio, 
back down to the base of the crescent. Pull nice and tight. When I'm at the base of the crescent here, I'm going to add my 11 OC beads. So I'm going to add 10 of, or nine of those rather. Go through that 10th bead there, through the purple, through the 11th bead, and then back up to decorate my sides. When I'm through the crescent and all of those 11 O's on the side, I'm going to add my five purple seed beads. One color. Go through the crescent again. Pass through all three of those seed beads. Come down through the crescent. So we're basically spinning around. It's almost like a square stitch. Add my five more purple seed beads along the side. So down through the crescent, through the first aluminum silver 11, pick up a purple bead, go up through the aluminum silver on the other side of the crescent bead here. That's going to mimic the look from the first one. And I'm going to sew up through then those five beads on the side, or you can go through your faceted round trio either way. Once you're there, you're going to go through your silver aluminum bead and then repeat the process for however long you want the necklace to be. So you're going to continue going up the side here, adding that design and the grouping that I'll do. I'll probably do about six of these and then we'll flip over and do the exact same thing on the other side. Just to show the chain sitting a little bit nicer, I have my 10 beads on here and my crescent, my round trio, and decorated. I'm coming out to the base of my crescent and I have on my one 11 in the aluminum and one in the vega. And I'm going through then that last aluminum before the crescent, coming out the crescent, and adding my five of my vega beads to each side. As I add those five beads to each side, I then go through the crescent as well as the three seed beads that sit on the top. Add the five over here. If you want a tighter look, you can use four. Go through the crescent again as well as that first aluminum right below the crescent, the one that you just added. Add in eight more aluminum silver because I'm doing 10 total and I have one at the top and one in the bottom. Go through that aluminum seed bead. When you're through the crescent after the aluminum seed bead, I simply reversed my thread and went back through the crescent the opposite direction and that holds the seed bead in there nicely. You don't see that thread at all through the crescent. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I'm going back through all of those aluminum 11 O's then, and I'm going to get ready to go back up through the aluminum 11 O's, the crescent, the faceted round trio, the crescent, and the first aluminum on the left hand side there, and I'll repeat that process one more time. I'm at the end of the first side and I'm going to let this sit to be about 17 inches just to give you an idea and I came up with seven groupings of the faceted round trios. So if you want it a little bit longer you might want to do um, an eighth grouping. After your last set here of the faceted round trio um, and the crescent design, I have 10 seat beads on and I have my cup button. I'm going to go through the back of my cup button Coming out the front, I'll add three of my silver beads. Actually, I'll add one silver, one crystal, one silver. Go down that cup button on the other side. Add in nine more beads. 
of the silver and then I'm going to reinforce by going back through the whole thing one more time. So I'm going to go back through those last three seed beads here. One up. Once I'm reinforced then, all I'm going to have to do is tie off my thread. So I'm simply going to go up here, reinforce this all, tie off the thread, and then I'm going to do the second side exactly like we did the first, where we added in the base there on the side. So I'm going to add the base in on this side here, picking up those four beads right after the corner bead, and coming up the side with my faceted round trio and my crescents. For the second side, once you're complete doing the crescents, and you can kind of get a look at it now, in its entirety. Very pretty, elegant look. All I'm going to do on the other side is do a loop for my cup button to sit inside of. So to do my loop, I have my thread and needle coming out of my 11-0 seed bead there. I'm going to give myself three 11-0s in the silver color. Then I'm going to do one 11 in the purple color. Going to do approximately 28 11 0s in my silver color. And let all of those drop down next to your purple bead. And keep in mind if you are using a cup button, depending on what you decorate it with in the middle, it could affect the loop size that you need to make. So you want to make sure that your cup button or that your clasp fits in. And once you have those beads on, go back down through the purple, 11, and that's going to create your loop to attach your clasp into. When you're coming out the purple bead, I'm going to add three more 11 OC beads. Go back through your crescent here. Uh, sorry, the 11 and the crescent. It's kind of repeating what we did for the whole length of the necklace. And that's going to create our little V right there. I like to pull my loop into a V rather than separating it out on a bead. It just makes it a little bit more stable. I'm going to go back through all of these beads now, retracing my thread line and reinforcing the loop. Once you're done reinforcing the loop, simply tie off your thread ends. Go back to all of the thread ends, and if you want to glue, you can burn those down closer too. If you left the needle attached and you're somebody that likes to sew back through your project a lot, you can do that as well. But as you're coming out then, you actually do finish up the design. So I'm going to go back through my design, kind of out at random places, and tie off creating loops. Once you are all finished burning the thread ends and creating the ends of the necklace here, your necklace is completed. It has a really pretty Victorian look to it and you can actually flip it over if you want a little bit edgier look with those crescents facing the opposite way. could have a lot of fun changing up colors, doing different beads, could add crystals in the whole way up if you wanted to do it for a dressier occasion, but it gives a nice uh, lay on the neck as well too. If you need any of these materials to do the tri Effective necklace, you can go back to the beginning of the video where we did the little drop down, and you can order those from me online if you want at potomacbeads.com. Or you can go below the video, look at the list of materials that are used, and you can go to your local Potomac Bead Company and pick those up as well. If you do want to get regular updates and regular videos, different product uh, highlights, some new things that are coming out, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. Also, if you think a friend might like it, you can share the video with them as well. If you do want to stay connected with us, find out um, more of the designs that people are making, you can stay connected with us through Facebook, through our beading and jewelry making group. And this again is Susan 
It's designed from the 2016 Potomac Bead Company Challenge. It is the trifecta necklace, and I know that uh, Susan does have a pattern. If anybody needs it, you can get your materials from us and pick up your pattern from her. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and have fun making the trifecta necklace.